everybody, welcome back to Missy's Imaginings. Today we're going to be putting together the lace overlay gown that is available on the website for free through the month of November. And there's uh, the pattern has usually been to uh, available to be purchased for an SD size BJD, but I reduced the size so it could fit smaller dolls. So today we're going to put that together. I'm going to try it on four different doll sizes and body types so you'll have an idea of how it will fit on the doll that you might be wanting to dress. So uh, we're going to fit it on this doll, on the 18 inch Evangeline, on a 16 inch uh, Tonner, and then on the 16 inch uh, Tonner Wild Imagination. Uh, Halloween Wild. So we're going to go ahead and try it on several different dolls just so you can get an idea of how it would fit. And then of course at the end of the video we're going to be doing the drawing for those who have sent in uh, their participation emails and we're going to draw and see who gets some prizes. So I'll go ahead and get everything ready and we'll set up the machine and we'll get started. Before we get started in putting the gown together I thought for the sake of some beginning sewers, we're going to go ahead and look at some basics about fabric layout. When cutting out a design, it's real important to look at the print of the fabric. So for this fabric, for instance, we see these happy little frogs. They're so cute. And what you'll notice is the frogs are all aligned the same direction. So there's a definite bottom edge of the fabric and the top edge of the fabric. So when you're laying out your pieces, you want to make sure that the bottom is always correctly positioned on your fabric, as opposed to fabric where everything is just higgledy-piggledy and you can lay out your pieces any which way because it won't matter. The fabric design isn't going to be affected once the garment is finished. There's also a nap to fabric that we'll look at in a minute, but when you're doing a design that's one direction or if you have a bordered fabric it's going to take more fabric to lay out your pieces because if this is the bottom hem you can't dual lay your pieces because then the, the pattern on this piece would be upside down. Also if you have a curvature on your pieces you want to think of the very center of that piece as being the vertical line to place uh, your pieces on the fabric. So you want to take into account how your fabric is going to look once your pieces are cut. So this, obviously, you'd have to lay the pieces staggered. You couldn't just, and if you lay them like this, you know, it's you're going to have all this wasted fabric, but that's just the nature of the beast. It's um, when you have a one directional print or a nap, it's going to use more fabric. So you have to kind of take that into account when you're picking out something to make and how much yardage to buy. Also, if you have something like this is a faux suede, so on the actual suede of the fabric, if you're going to smooth out the fabric, you can feel that everything is going one direction. And the way to check that is if you brush it backwards, and I don't know if the camera will show that, you can see where it roughs up that suede edge where one side will lay it all smooth and the other side will form that, that contrasting color in the nap. And so I don't know if that one shows very well, but you can kind of feel that. And so there again, you'd want all your pattern pieces to lay in a manner that when it brushes all this way, this is the bottom and then that's the top. So you want to look out for that. In our gown that we're putting together, this lace fortunately has, and I don't know what the correct term would be, but I call it a dual directional print. So I'm going to lay it out here and see if you can see. And uh, I'll grab a, here's a pointer, my little palette knife. So if we take a look at this flower, we can see that it appears that the top of edge of the flower is here and what I would call the bottom edge of the flower here. But this flower is the very same flower, but it's flipped upside down. So this print could go this way 
or it could go this way, which is nice when you're going to lay out pattern pieces because it doesn't matter which way your pieces lay. They can be either way because here's the flowers going up, here's the flowers coming down, flowers coming up, flowers coming down. So it goes both directions. So you just want to kind of look at that when you're laying out pattern pieces um, and watch for the nap. I have done things when unfortunately I wasn't paying attention or didn't you know didn't catch that nap issue and then had things that kind of run the wrong way. They still look nice but if you're trying to smooth it down part of it will go the wrong direction. I also found that on this particular piece of lace I had already used the the edge for something so I couldn't lay my pieces out with the hem along the finished edge of the lace so I'll probably add some lace to the bottom or I might even beat it once we're done just to make that a little bit more fancy. So this is going to be the lace we're using. I am going to overlay the lace onto black. Where's that little piece? So this is what it'll look like when it's done. It'll have the red lace over the black. So my lining is going to be the black and then the corset is going to be some red ultra leather fabric which I like using for the corsets and for coats and whatnot. It doesn't fray. The inside has a real nice finish so it doesn't have to be lined. You could line it if you want to but this kind has a real nice finish on it. So that will be the corset. So let's look at our pieces. We have the corset pieces all cut out. Let's see, we'll line up the back. There we go, and another bag. So the corset pieces will be like this and be sewn together. Then we have the inserts. So when I sew the dress, I like to go ahead and insert the triangles into the front pieces and the back pieces rather than attach them to the side. So I am going to go ahead and insert those. The way that I'm going to do that is first I'm going to cut my piece where the lace is laying on my pattern because then I can see the line through the lace. So I'm going to cut this Just on that line, I'm cutting up the length of that slit. So now that that is cut, I'm going to have to insert the lace uh, triangle, which is one of these, will be inserted, let's move some stuff out of the way, into that triangle right here. And so that's what's going to give that extra volume to my pieces and I just kind of like the way an insert looks so you could you know bend your pieces I suppose but anyway so I'm going to insert that in there but because I'm doing this method I have to have four lace pieces that are the triangles one for each back and then two for the front and the same with the lining so when I'm going to cut the lining piece I want that slit to be in the same position so this is just kind of a way you can do it without having to draw all your lines on everything. So now I can take the back piece get those out of the way and place this piece that I've already cut on the top and it's just kind of a quick way to um, get the slit cut in. So now that this one's already cut I can just move that out of the way and trim along this edge and then I know my triangles will be roughly in the same position which they don't have to be super exact but this way then that's done and I'm going to do that to both of the back uh, this back and the other back piece and then I'm going to use that same method on the front so I'll go ahead and get those ready and then we'll continue I've already got my machine threaded with thread 
Uh, so we have red color to go with the lace. I'm not really concerned about the color on the lining because the lace is going to overlay that anyway. And then I also set up my serger for a narrow um, edge. So when I'm finishing things, it'll be a, a real narrow edge that my serger does just to finish things and make it look nice. So I've already got that ready on just a piece of sample fabric. So the first thing I'm going to do, as um, many of you know if you've watched very long, is what I call my prep sewing, which is simply to put the darts in the lining and then also in the lace. It's hard to see the markings on the lace, so I'll probably have to just line that up on my pattern piece when I'm ready to do the lace as far as the darts. So first I'm going to put the darts in, and then the next step will be to actually put the inserts into the fronts and back. I just pin those together, pull it tight, and then I'm going to sew from where the pin is to where the little dot is, which is the end of the dart. So here I want to make sure my lace is the right side down because I don't want to sew on that. So I kind of check and see where the pretty piping, what I would call little piping edges of the lace, I want to make sure that's going to be on the outside where the little flat edge is the inside. So that's why I have the, the good side down because I'm going to pull this up and sew on this side. Uh, so that that's on the inside of my fabric. So I'm just going to pull that tight. Actually, I should probably pin the tip first. So I'm going to mark the tip with that pin. And then go ahead and pull that together here. So I'm going to pull this together and then I'm going to sew to where this pin is because it's just hard to mark your lace. Marks don't show up very well. And once I get it in the machine, I can just remove that pin. Now on the lace, because there's not much fabric, it's a lot of holes, you want to just go slow and not real fast so that it doesn't bunch up. And then I'm just going to sew to where the fold is, right where that pin is marking my position. And that uh, dart, you don't, I guess you wouldn't have to put the darts in, but I just kind of want a more fitted shape, so I'm going to go ahead and put those darts in. Okay, so I'm going to mark. Oh, and I do need to do the long ones on the front. I did the side ones, but forgot about the long ones there. So I'll go back and put those in on the lining as well. And if you'll notice, when I go to line this up, I'm always lining up my neckline rather than this armhole because the armhole has already been affected by the dart that's right there, so the armhole is not going to line up 
correctly. So I want to line up my neckline when I mark the spots for these darts. So this one you can see has been pulled and it adjusts how the side looks. So now I'm going to do this dart, but I'm lining it up with the neckline to make sure that it's in the right position. So there's the darts, I have the side darts and the center darts. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in the triangles. And so to do the triangles, I'm simply going to, they're all shaped the same. So I just want to make sure I have right sides together. I know it's going to lay like this, so with right sides together I'm going to start up at the top and I'm going to pin there and so I'm going to sew from the bottom up to the slit and then I'm going to pivot and flip that and then come down this side on the other side of the triangle and it does take a little bit of finesse and what I have found which is a little weird is up at the top I take the the top of the triangle and I don't actually line up the the edges so I have a little bit of an overlap by the triangle so that when I flip that over I've got a place to pivot and I'm going to pin that edge And then after I get it sewn, I'll go ahead and uh, run that through the serger just to finish that off nice. Okay, so now I'm keeping my quarter inch seam allowance along the front, not the triangle. My triangle's on the outside. So I'm going to come up past the slit. I'm going to pull that pin out of the way. And it's going to come up and almost touch the bottom of that dart that I made. And now I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to pivot and turn it back. And I'm going to pull the pins out. And now I'm going to flip that triangle to the inside and I'm going to line these pieces up but now I want to be sewing this so that it's on the inside of the fabric so this is where it can get a little tricky so I'm going to flip that around and I'm actually going to lift my needle I'm going to pull it out and trim it and I'm going to tie those threads and you can back tack and now I'm going to flip that triangle 
that I was sewing to the inside so that now I can line up this side and that way both my seam allowances will be on the inside of the garment. And now I'll sew up right to the tip of that triangle on the other side of the triangle. I want to pull this all kind of flat so I don't sew on top of something that I don't want to sew on top of. Here we go. And here again, you can do a small back tack or you can tie those off. done it kind of either way just to show it can be done. So now when you open that up you have your triangle that's inset inside here. Now this lace won't really fray. It's kind of a tooly type lace in this account. Um, but I'm still going to finish those little raw edges just because I like it better when it's finished. I think it looks nicer. But you wouldn't have to on this type of lace because it's not going to fray. But I just like it to look a little more finished. So what I'll do is that same process on all of the slits in the gown. So I'll do that on the other slit on the front, both the back, and then on the lining as well. So that's the process to put in the little triangle inserts. If you don't want to go to that trouble, all you have to do is there's kind of a dot there that is going to come in later when we're putting it together, but it also is kind of a guide. But you can just sew the triangle on the outside of the side and do that on both sides of the front, both sides of the back, and that will give you a lot of flare on the side and your front will remain intact. So either way that you'd like to do that, if you want to put the insert in or if you want to just add it to the side. But we're going to do that process on all the pieces, and then I'll come back. So now we have all of our inserts placed into the lace and the lining. So the inserts are done, and the darts are all put in. So you have a very flared front and both of the sides. Uh, you just always want to make sure that when you're doing the right sides, you're going to have the right sides of both things so that your center back you know will line up so you don't end up putting you know your pieces like this and having them upside down so here's all the lace pieces with the inserts uh, the cool thing about using the red thread is so I can show what I did on here it's a little easier to see I did hem the top edges of the lining on both of the back pieces and the front but here's what those pieces look like. So you can see the red uh, thread shows the insert. And I just went ahead and finished. I did find, because I wanted to serge these, that I just did one seam rather than sewing it in and then serging it. And actually, when using the serger, it was easier to start at the tip and work down 
and then do the tip and work down um, just because of the way fabric fits into the serger and you can't really flip very easily and all that and then I wanted to be able to lock in my uh, the end of my threads but I found that it was actually easier to start at the tip and go down so if you want to try that even with a sewing machine start at the tip and work down it might be a little easier just make sure you always have your right sides together uh, the other thing to be aware of and it's not that big of a deal because the pattern is going to be pretty long enough is the edges of the hem aren't totally smooth but that's okay because it can just even out once we get the gown put together and you're ready to do the hem so when the inserts are in the darts are in hem the top edges of the lining and the next thing we're going to do is on the pattern you'll see there's some dots and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sew the lining to the lace but I'm only going to sew as far down as the dot because on the skirt I want the lace overlay to be free of the lining so that it can fall a little um, prettier so it's not actually sewn in on the sides I want the lace to totally be disconnected um, from the skirt of the lining so on my lining for the top I'm only going to sew this far down and then also the the armholes and so I'm going to attach the lace to the lining let's grab the front lace piece here get my sides out of the way so I'm going to line up the armholes and the sides and I'm only going to sew down about this far to actually connect the lace to the lining and I'm not going to sew across the top I'm only going to sew this far so just the the armhole and down about this far so that that part will be connected but I'm not going to sew the whole side of the skirt because then once I put that uh, side seam together I'm going to sew my lace together and then I'll sew the lining together but I want that lace to fall completely separate from the lining when it's done so I hope that makes sense I'm only going to sew down to the dot from the underarm to attach the lace to the lining and I'm going to do that on the front and then also on the backs so let's see I can get the right piece so the center there we go it's this piece so I'm going to do the just what's left of the underarm there's only a little bit here and then I'm going to sew down about that far it kind of goes right about to the tip of those inserts just if you don't want to mark you just kind of want to judge where you're going it's just going to be about that far so I'm going to sew down a back tack and I'm not going to do well <laughs> yeah I'll probably do the same on the the center back and then that's actually you know going to turn in and uh, have snaps and whatnot so I'll probably do the same thing there but I'm just going to attach the lace but not all the way down to the end of the skirt so there we go that's going to be our next step and I'll go ahead and do one seam and uh, then I'll stop the camera and those little darts I pressed down the little um, center darts I pressed towards the center on all of the little inserts I press the seams toward the inside of the triangle so there we go put a pin here and I'm going to stitch inside the quarter inch seam allowance because right now I'm only stay stitching I'm not actually sewing any seams and uh, that kind of moved on me here oh there we go pin that down um, so I want to stay inside the seam allowance so that when I'm actually putting the dress together I won't have any of that stay stitching show because it was inside the seam allowance. So I'm going to line this up, get a hold of my lace. So right here I'm just going to start where the top of that insert is. Um, 
that's about where the dot is and I'll just back tack a little hold that in place you don't have to but I just want it to stay in place and I'm only going in about an eighth of an inch just a little bit because like I say I'm just stay stitching to actually attach the lace to the lining I'm going to go to the corner and then I'll pivot so I'm still within that eighth of an inch there we go go up to the side there we go and stay stitch there back tack a little bit pull that out and trim there we go so there's the one side so that's attaching attaching those pieces so I'll go ahead and I'll do that on uh, the other side as well as the back pieces and uh, then I'll come back now all the lace has been connected to the lining and my next step is to go ahead and with the center backs facing each other like so over with the good side uh, to good side the lace to lace I'm going to sew the shoulder seams together uh, sewing the back to the front at the shoulders once the shoulder seams are sewn I'm going to put in the collar now the collar I've already let me find the little collar here it is uh, the collar I've already uh, surged the top edge of the collar so when you look at the collar piece the shorter edge is the edge that goes around the neck and then the longer edge is the edge that will go on the the dress and I always uh, make my colors just a little bit longer so I'm sure to have enough because then any excess at the end if it's a little too long I can trim off so once the shoulders are done I'm going to match the center bottom seam of the collar with the center front and then I'm going to pin from center to the outside and attach that collar so first I'll do the shoulder seams and then I'll turn the camera back on when I'm ready to start working on the collar now the shoulder seams are sewn together um, and that was just lace because that's all there is for the shoulders so now I'm going to find the center of my little collar there we go and I'll pin the center of the collar and so with the right sides together I'm pinning the collar to the gown and I start at the center and then work out and here I can see I'm going to have plenty left over which is nice because that can just be trimmed off once it's sewn on and I'll probably serge this seam as well just to have a nice finished tiny hem and uh, but if you're doing a machine you can go ahead and do the quarter inch seam allowance and then I would uh, probably trim that seam allowance just to like one eighth of an inch because that seam you know on the lace is going to show so the collar is now sewed on so I just sewed around the edge there um, I have not yet finished the back edges but I did trim them to make them even and then I also used a little bit of fray check just on the edges to make sure that those little surged bits uh, aren't going to fray so fray check is great stuff now I'm going to make sure the right sides of the lace are together and I'm going to find the center top of the sleeve and pin it to the shoulder seam and then pin the, my way down and go ahead and sew in the top edge of the sleeve to the armhole of the dress let's see 
sometimes if I just fold that, it's an easier way to find the center. There we go. So we line that up with the shoulder seam. And then I work down to the edges. There we go. So I do that side and then this side. And then I'm going to, you can use the machine, but I'm going to go ahead and do this seam in the serger, just since I have it and I like those little finished edges on my seams. So there we go. So we're going to pin the that edge to the garment, and then I'll just sew around there. And I'll do that to both sleeves, and that's what puts the, the sleeve onto the garment. So now the sleeves are set in on both sides. So the next thing I'm going to do is with right sides together, so the dress will look like it's inside out, I'm going to start sewing, and I've already uh, put a rolled edge on the ends of the sleeves. I am uh, going to pin and sew down the sleeve to the underarm and then I'm going to sew, sew down just as far as these pieces that are already attached lace to lining I'm gonna go down that far but I'm not going to sew the skirt only as far as uh, that stay stitching is and I'll do that on both sides so now that my sleeves are sewn shut and it's sewn down the side seam. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lining fabric, just the lining, and I'm going to sew that together. And I'm just going to snip right where the end of that seam is, like snip the seam allowance, then pull the lace out of the way and line up the lining and I'm going to sew that lining together so I'm going to sew that then I'll do that to both sides and the back and then I will take uh, the lace and starting at that same point but only the lace I'll sew the lace together and I'll do that on the serger as well so it won't show that seam but so you just take that lace and tuck it out of the way, snip a little bit of that seam allowance which allows you to work a little bit better, and I'll snip a little of a, just a little bit to kind of get it out of the way. Then do the lining seam, and then when that's done you'll pull the lining out of the way and go ahead and sew the lace together. And that way the lace falls completely free of your dress which is kind of what I prefer so that's what I'll do next so now I have the side seams all done and I sewed the lining together separately then the lace once I had that done there's a little bit of a spot that ends up being unsewn that you can kind of see here on the back and on the side seams I went ahead and started a little bit above and just surged down to make that completely surged um, holding the lace out of the way and then I also decided to go ahead and serge up the back. It will be folded over, but that way it's just nice and finished. So next, we'll go ahead and turn the dress right side out. So you can get an idea of what it looks like. So I'll turn the sleeves. I probably used to, should have used a little turning stick, but that's okay. So there's that sleeve. My hands are pretty dry from work, so it tends to want to catch on the lace, but here we go. 
So there we have the gown. The next thing I'll do is um, simply serge around the edge of the lace just for a serged edge. I'm not going to turn it or anything. And then the bottom I'll serge and then actually turn it under and hem it because I always want the lace to be just a little bit longer than the lining. So the lining will be surged so that all these little uneven edges are even. And then I'll go ahead and, and hem that. So here's the gown. And then on the back, this is finished. This will just turn in just a little bit, not quite a quarter of an inch. And I'll just stitch that uh, with a just a seam and turn in my my edges and then that will have snaps on the back as closures on the back of the gown so I'll probably do the closures um, up tall on the collar and then where the lining is then probably one here and then so it'll be three snaps maybe four but probably just three I'll kind of see how it goes but anyway so that's the gown so all that's left is to hem that but now by doing it that way you can see how the lace is totally separate from the lining so there's the gown and I'll go ahead and hem that and get that ready and then we're going to go ahead and put together the corset pieces alright so now to do the corset I've when I cut out the pieces I labeled the sides of the back with a B and then on the side of the corset I labeled the B to go towards the back and the S to go towards the side. On the front pieces I labeled the side to go at the side and the center front with front. So that way when I sew it I match the correct pieces together. So we're simply going to, I always start at the back and work this way then here and work this way so we're just going to put these pieces together Now, with everything sewn together, I'm going to open up the seam allowances and top stitch up and down each seam allowance. And then once the top stitching is done, I'm simply going to fold over all the edges and hem all the way around. If you want it to be lined, you would cut the same pieces of fabric, do the same steps, and then take this piece and your sewn fabric piece with right sides together and so all the way around the edge leaving about an inch on the bottom center back flip it right side out and then turn those edges under and, and hem it but I don't mind the finishing once these are top stitched open um, I don't mind any of this showing so I'm not going to line it just because this is already a little bit heavy so that's what I'm going to do next Okay, so after we put the dress together, 
this is what it looks like. This is on the 18 inch uh, Evangeline Gasly uh, by Tonner's Wild Imagination. I did find that this corset was big on her. So, um, so far, because I haven't tried it on the other dolls yet, I did just pinch it and clip it in the back because it was too big. So if I was going to keep it for this doll, I would just simply, instead of making it stick out in the back, I would do it inside and put another seam and it would fit. So I could just fit it to her. But I kind of had the pattern a little larger just because I wanted it to fit a variety of dolls. So on the Evangeline, this is what it looks like. Her feet are actually here, so it has a plenty of overlay to fall and gather at her feet, um, which is kind of what I like in a gown. Um, I don't like it when they're too short. So anyhow, it's got the lace sleeves. Uh, her hands were able to go through those sleeves with no problem. So here it is on the Tonner Wild Imagination Evangeline, 18 and a half inches tall. So now we'll go ahead and switch it to the Tonner 16 inch fashion doll body. Here it is on the Tonner 16 inch fashion doll body, just their, their standard body. Um, this was the Harley Quinn and so that's where her skin is so pale. The sleeves are long, of course, on her, and then there's a lot of extra length. So this is when, on the pattern, if you were to make it, you could cut off, there's a good two inches here on the bottom of the pattern, where you can cut that out and allow for a shorter doll. Um, also, on her, the corset was big, so I have it clipped, so that would just need to be, um, tightened. The dress is a little big, but because of the corset, it it can work, which is kind of why I like this, this gown, because it can fit a large variety, and all you have to do is adjust the corset. So the hips are fine. There's plenty of room in this kind of a doll. So now we'll go ahead and put this dress on the Tonner Wild Imagination 16-inch Halloween Wild who is a little um, thicker through the body. So we'll go ahead and try it on that doll. Here's the dress on the Tonner Wild Imagination Halloween. Um, on this doll, it actually, it fits her a little better um, than the, the just the fashion doll by Tonner. And as far as the corset, I did pinch it a little, but I think it's pinched less on her than on the Evangeline. I think Evangeline has a little bit smaller waist. And then of course she's shorter, so it would have to have that length cut off. But on this doll, um, I wanted you to see this because she's very similar to a lot of MSD size BJDs. So this size, um, for an MSD, it's going to work. You would just need to shorten it and then shorten the sleeves unless you like that longer sleeve that comes down over their fingers a little bit. So this is how it looks on the Halloween, which I just love red and black. So I'm anxious to go ahead and try it on, last but not least, on the 50 centimeter Obitsu, just because she already has red hair. So we'll go ahead and take it off her and put it on this doll. So this is uh, the last doll I'm going to try the gown on. This is the Obitsu 50 centimeter vinyl doll. I'm not sure how she would compare to some of the other vinyl dolls, um, like the Smart Doll, or I think there's, I don't even remember what other brand there is. Um, but anyway, it does fit her. The corset is not pinched at all in the back. It actually just fits her. So this is uh, the doll that I will keep this gown on, just because I'm glad to finally have something that she can wear and look pretty in. So um, yeah, this is the Obitsu 50 centimeter. It's not her, her own head. She comes with a different head. So this is the Gretel head by Para, Parabox, I think is the, the brand, but I got it from the Junkie Spot. So anyway, so that's how it fits her. She is a flat footed doll on her little metal base there. So yeah, it looks good on her. So without further ado, we will let her stand here and we're going to draw some prizes. So these prizes are going to those who have uh, emailed me that they would like to be in the drawing. 
um, for the prize giveaways to celebrate that we have 100 subscribers. I'll probably do another drawing when we have 500. Then I'll do another drawing. So if you didn't get an email in and you think, oh, I didn't know about it, don't worry. Um, we'll do another one. So I, I have fun giving away prizes. I think it's fun. So I have prizes in this jar. And those who emailed me in this jar, or bowl, aren't these cute? This is a popcorn maker. <laughs> Who's the thunk? So anyway, um, so I will draw out a prize, and then I will go ahead and draw the name of the recipient who will get that prize. And then I do have the prizes so I can show you what they are. So the first prize is the blue uh, gown pattern for the slim one-third resin sole. And here comes the light again this pattern so it's a printed pattern with instructions and this is going to go to let me see here to teddy bears so there you go there's a dress pattern coming your way so I'm going to tape these two together so that I have the right prize and the right person so there we go so those are taped together for you gonna be coming your way the next prize is, let's see what's next, I only want one, is um, this will be the second choice uh, on a wig, a one-third wig, so, and the light left, <laughs> I'm opening and shutting the blinds, there we go, so this is the second choice wig, so what I'm doing is I have some wigs, they're third scale, and I have yellow, purple, white, two red, a black, a pink, let's see, there's two purple, two red, two white, a black, a pink, and then there's a black with red tips. So I will email the winner, and you, this is the second choice, there's also one in there for the first choice. Just in case the first choice picks the pink, then I'll let second choice know whether or not it's available. Does that make sense? So this is the second choice. Um, so if they, if the first choice picks one where there's two, then you're good to go. But so this is the second choice of wig color, and it will go to Carolyn A in California. So Carolyn, if you're watching, you get the second choice. So I will be emailing you to let you know which ones are available so you can pick what color wig you would like. So there we go. The wig will be coming your way. I'm taping those together. And the next prize is a one-third lacy gown pattern. So that's the pattern for this gown in the one-third size that is a pre-printed pattern with instructions. Um, this size is available still on the website for free throughout the end of November. So if you want this size, you can go print that off. But this is already printed and it has instructions. And it will be going to, let's see, this is going to be Tata Brown. So Tata Brown, you are going to be getting the Lacy Light pattern. So I will tape your prize and your name together. So I will contact you for mailing information. There we go. All right, next prize. Dun, 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 dun. This is so fun. This is just so fun. Okay, the next one is for the Forest Walk Paper Doll Book, which is uh, this Paper Doll Book. I believe there's 25 pages of doll dresses, wings, patterns, not patterns, I'm sorry, wings, wigs. Anyway, it's the Forest Walk Paper Doll Book. And this is going to be going to, gotta pick a name, dun dun dun, uh, Deb Sherhart. So there we go. So that's going to be coming your way. So I will tape your prize and your name together. So there we go. Dun dun dun. Okay, so we'll set that over there. Okay, next prize is uh, the pink skirt. Oh, here we go. So this is the pink flower skirt that fits the uh, Tonner uh, Wild Imagine Evangeline. I don't know if it would fit just a regular Tonner. We could try it on and see. Just so you have an idea if it will fit her or not. I don't know. Those uh, Evangelines have awfully thin waists. 
Oh, look at that. I think. Oh, it's it's snug, but can I get the snap? Aha! So there we go. Well, there's good news. So if you have just a Tonner, regular Tonner fashion doll, it will fit. Um, so if you have any real thin dolls, then it will fit their waist. Oh, I didn't even know that. I just made it for the Evangeline and hadn't put it on another doll. So this pink skirt will go to... Who's this? We'll go to... Meadow Hawthorne. So there you go, Meadow. Dun, dun, dun. You get the pink flower skirt. All right, so I'm going to put that over there and I will contact you to find out where to send it. Okay, I'll tape your prize and your name together. All right, next prize. What's coming up next? Here we have uh, the Four Doll Fashion Set Paper Doll Book. So that's this uh, Four Doll Fashion Set. There's four paper dolls. Um, two different body styles. There we go. I was watching the video after I edited it and I realized they started making a statement that I never finished. So um, when I was showing this before, so, and there's I think 16 pages of fashions to fit those four body styles. But um, my daughter, I had made paper dolls in high school, uh, a bunch of them, and they're on a CD that's available um, on eBay and on the website but my daughter said mom you need to do a new one so that's what inspired me to start getting back into paper dolls again um, was my daughter she said you need to do new stuff so this was my first new thing for paper dolls so this book will go to here we go Comet Child 4 so Comet Child 4 you are going to get a four doll fashion set paper doll book so there we go, I'm taping your name to your prize so I can contact you and find out where to send that. Then, oh, I've got to find out which prize is next. Okay, this is the third scale SB, SD size wig you'll get first choice. So there again, that will be one of the wigs. And I will email you the colors um, just if you're not watching at the time when you look at your stuff. So white, pink, yellow, purple, black with red tips, black or red. So you can pick your color of wig. You will have first choice and then I will contact the other person with second choice. So the first choice wig color goes to First Susan. <laughs> so <laughs> That was so cute. So First Susan, just in case there might have been several, you will get the first choice color of third scale BJD wig. So there we go. I will tape your prize to your name. And what do we have next? Next is, a, oh, the black skirt. So this is the black uh, flower skirt with the tulle little petticoat to go underneath it. And it's just strips of tulle. They're not even sewn together. It's just on an elastic band to give some puff to the skirt. So here's the, the puffy black skirt. And that is going to go to Ian. Ian won the puffy black skirt. So there you go, Ian. So I will tape your prize and your information together so I can contact you. And there you go. So there's your prize. And the last prize we have, I think it's a pattern. Yeah, so it's the last one in here. I don't need to swirl it anymore. Is the Daylight Shimmer pattern, and it's the last name. That's hilarious that I had nine things that I was giving away, and nine people emailed me. So th that's fun. I just love it when everybody wins. So here we go. This is for Cheryl. I don't have my glasses on. Cheryl Marie Clayton. So Cheryl Marie, you will get a Daylight Shimmer pattern. This pattern can fit the Evangeline size doll and the Anora um, and I think I've also had it on the Eloween size so MSD you might just have to shorten the legs but anyway so that pattern is yours and I will be contacting you to find out where to send it so there's all my prizes so thank you so much for 
participating and I will be anxious to go ahead and mail those out and when we get to 500 we'll do it again we'll give away more prizes I just love giving away prizes <laughs> so thank you for coming along and watching and happy sewing I hope you had a great Thanksgiving I hope you're still enjoying your Thanksgiving weekend I know I'm liking the time off to be at home that's great so enjoy the rest of your weekend happy sewing and I'll see you next time bye